So my Pat McGrath and Star Wars collection arrived the day before Christmas Eve and it has been killing me not being able to play with these because I've just been so busy with holiday stuff, which by the way, happy belated Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, anything that you celebrate. I hope you guys are enjoying the holiday season. But I said, you know, after Vlogmas, I was just gonna chill. But then all of these good launches came in and now I'm so excited and I just gotta play with the makeup. Okay, so I am in my parents' house. I'm using my vlogging camera, so it's gonna be a little bit more casual today. But I'm gonna play with everything that I purchased from the Pat McGrath and Star Wars collection. If you didn't know, right now, Pat McGrath is having an end of year sale for 40% off. I know there's always a sale going on, but at the very least, 40% off is the best sale that Pat McGrath does. So I, I'm pretty sure Star Wars is not included in that sale, but if there's anything else, now's a good time to shop. So here's what I picked up from the Star Wars collection. I picked up all four of the eye pots, and then I picked up all three of the eyeshadow palettes. However, one did not arrive. I only have two of them, and unfortunately, the one that did not arrive was Divine Droid. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe those aren't shipping until the 27th. I emailed the customer service just to make sure. I have not gotten a reply back on where my Divine Droid is, but you guys know best. Can you tell me? They're not shipping out until the 27th, right? That's what it says on the website, but I wasn't sure if those of us who ordered the pack of all three of them, maybe they forgot mine, so let me know. But I only have Sith Seduction and the Golden One to show you today. I did see, let's talk about the tea, for the Star Wars edition Midnight Sun. I did see that it was a sticker. I called it. I didn't want it to be true. I didn't think we'd do a sticker slapped on a palette that's been on sale for 50% off for the last few weeks, but she went there. I do have my thoughts, but I don't want to be mean. But just know, with all the sales and that sticker, Pat McGrath, I feel like, has become a less luxurious brand than they were at the beginning of their time when I first started becoming a fan of the brand. That being said, I'm happy about all the sales because we can at least get Pat McGrath for a little bit more affordable. But Ooh, there's been a lot of things happening you guys. I don't want to get into it But yes, I did see that that was a sticker and I'm very disappointed in that honestly Let's go ahead though and get into I want to start off with the chroma Lux artistry pigment Because this is a new formula from Pat McGrath and I had to play with them I picked up all four I wasn't going to but then I saw they had the bundle which I think is still available It's sold out. I'm just kidding. The bundle was $115 and it looks like most of the eye chromes are sold out yeah the only one that's available is rouge rebellion so i'm sure they'll do a restock and if they don't that sucks but the star wars collection with pat mcgrath star wars in general just has such a big cult following i'm not surprised a lot of stuff sold out this is the box that they are going to come in i mean it's really cute i think the boxes of the pat mcgrath stuff like the artwork on it's really well done so this first one that i have in my hand is extra galactic gold so the packaging it's a nice heavy pot however you guys it is just a sticker like a star wars sticker plastered on top and it's not as thick as the one on the midnight sun palette i don't love that it just feels like they got a generic pot from the factory and then stuck a star wars sticker on there i mean i guess that's not what it feels like that that is what exactly happened again not that big of a deal, but we're paying luxury prices and luxury brands don't do this. So they also do come with a little cap to press it in. It reminds me a lot of the Tarte paint pots, but those Tarte ones would explode over time. So I'm wondering if that's what's going to happen here. Anyways, let's feel it. It's not super wet or creamy but it has a lot of pigment to it. Can you see that right here? This is the gal extra galactic gold. Ooh, that's pretty. That holds a lot of pigment. It's not super sparkly or anything though. Oh my gosh, I'm so out of my element. This has a 24 month shelf life and is made in Italy, by the way. And this is Rouge Rebellion, which looks like this. Let's swatch it. That's very pretty. Falcon Noir, which is the darkest one. I almost didn't get this one. It's kind of like a gunmetal color. 
Okay, that one looks really cool as well. And then we have Smuggler Spice, which if you know me, this is the one that I was definitely more excited for. Ooh, I think it's gorgeous. Uh, I thought the gold shift would be a little stronger, but it still is very pretty. It actually swatched a little softer than I was hoping for, but it still looks very pretty. So these are all four of the chrome pots. I do want to play with the eyeshadows, but first I want to put these on the eyelid just to see how they perform. And I definitely want to start off with Falcon Noir because it's black. I want to see if it's patchy at all. So I'm just going to apply this right to the eyelid. It doesn't really feel like a cream eyeshadow, honestly. It almost feels like the way that it's applying that I dipped my finger in an eyeshadow, just a powder eyeshadow, and it's applying almost as if it were a powder eyeshadow, not a cream, because a lot of times with creams, you almost have to spread it out. This one I'm lightly patting, and it's doing the work itself. It's actually very easy to apply. I'm going to take just a refer brush to see how it blends. Now there might be a little bit of leftover powder. I did not do a good job of applying this by the way. I just am trying to get a feel for the formula. So it's drier than I thought it was going to be. For some reason I just thought that these were going to be really really creamy and wet feeling like the Tarte, but they're not. They definitely have a dryness to them, but in a good way. The way that I feel makes it easier for the average user to apply. So I did a bad job applying it, but you can see how pretty that is. Let's also do Rouge Rebellion right now since you can actually pick this one up. I, again, don't think I'll use this one very often, but ooh, wow lots of pigment to it so even though it applies like a powder i don't know if you can see i literally just got a powder fallout so it applies like a powder but it has like the strength of a cream and it's messy when you apply it this way that i am but then get a brush and it kind of blends out like a powder honestly to me this does not work like a cream shadow at all it's just like a really creamy powder shadow in a pot so you get a lot of pigment payoff from it it's not really metallic or anything which is what i look for in the pots you know you, i want them really chrome and wet looking they don't look wet once you get them on the eyes while they're pigmented they don't have any microfine glitters in there so if you ask me while i like these and i think they're easy to apply these aren't an effect that you can't get with just using a high quality powder shadow. These to me are working out like powder shadows. They swatched really beautifully, but because they don't have any like je ne sais quoi to them, you know, they don't have metallicness, they don't have extra microfine glitters, that impact that pot shadows give you, these just look like normal, nice, shimmery eyeshadows on the lid, which I just feel like you don't need to pay extra for. And I like this so far. But is it really that special? I'm not sure. Okay, so the next ones that I want to use, let's do a Smuggler Spice because this is the one that I'm the most excited for. So pros, really easy to apply, right? Easier than a lot of other cream shadows, but that's because they are really more so of a powder eyeshadow than anything. So this isn't an effect that you just, you can, you can it's not a special effect. You can get this with, normal powder eyeshadow but that is very very pretty it's actually quite natural i would recommend using an eyeshadow base underneath this it will help the product stick to the eyelid a little better and also will help it from creasing which i don't think these are going to be bad on the creasing front because they aren't so creamy so if you have oily eyelids i think you will like this extra galactic gold is the last one this one i think is probably the most impactful in terms of it not just looking like a regular eyeshadow on the eyelid and you can put powder shadow down first and then put these on the eyelid this one's very pretty i actually am surprised at how much i like this because i thought extra galactic gold was going to be really boring and repetitive but it is very pretty and a little bit more impactful than just a normal powder eyeshadow but in terms of what i would reach for the most it would definitely be smuggler spice but it is more natural i think the colors are all very pretty the red and the black are more star warsy whereas extra galactic gold and smuggler spice are a little bit more natural okay i'm gonna take these off 
And then we're going to play with the actual eyeshadow palettes in here. And I'm going to create two different looks on two different eyes. Okay, let's get into the eyeshadow palettes. I was really excited about these because these are the same formulation as what came out in the most recent holiday collection. And I love that. It was a new formulation from Pat McGrath. And I thought it felt so luxurious, looked so pretty on the eyelids, very elegant formulation. So I was excited to see the formulas come back. Like I said, I ordered Divine Droid. That one is not here yet, but I have the other two. They are $36 each, which I think is not terrible for Pat McGrath. And the boxes they come in are just so cute, right? These are also made in Italy. They have a 12-month shelf life. So this is the packaging, I think, for the golden one. That's literally the name, yes, the golden one. And then Sith Seduction is this darker packaging, and I just, at least the boxes are nice. Now, the packaging... Here again is the golden one. The packaging doesn't feel as nice to me. It feels like there's a wrapping over the holiday ones. I don't know if that one's actually true, but I wonder if somebody tore this apart, do you think it would be the same packaging as the holiday ones? Because the holiday ones, I feel like didn't have a wrapping over this one. I don't know, will somebody do that? But <laughs> this is the golden one. And then it ha again has a Star Wars sticker on top. Should I rip it apart? This is for science. There's like a little seam right here. I wonder if I pull it. This is probably totally unnecessary, but it does. It feels like there's a wrapping over it because you can literally see the seam right here. I don't know if seam is the right word, but okay. I'm just, I'm being a butthole. It's fine. I think it's just wood underneath. I was like waiting to like reveal <laughs> the same packaging as what was on the holiday ones but I wonder it's it's probably they have the same component made and then they put the blue covering over top which I'm not mad about because I really like these style of palettes so anyways this is what the golden one is going to look like this one's the more neutral one I'm not as excited about these so let's go ahead and swatch these because I'm not in my normal setting I'm not going to do live swatches here's the swatches of the golden one I mean a boring color story but neutral lovers you are obviously going to very much enjoy this one this shade in particular cyborg relations super duper creamy I'm a little disappointed with how binary sunset looks because it swatched a little bit more sheer but still feels really nice let's swatch cis seduction now because Sith Seduction is definitely more galactic, right? The colors in Sith Seduction feel a little bit more creamy. Sith Seduction is interesting. The Sith Seduction does not have any mattes in it, whereas the golden one had two mattes in it, but very, very pretty. This one I feel like is truly a Star Wars color story, but these are the color stories of the two. The only concern I have with Sith Seduction is this one right here, I, be I believe is Dark Destiny. It didn't adhere to my skin very well, so we'll have to play around with that. So we're going to start off with the golden one, and I want to start off with this matte shade right here. My hand is not dirty, by the way. It just, my makeup remover wipe dried out, so I couldn't get it all off. So the mattes in this palette are really, really nice. They're almost more of a satin feeling to them. They're very nice for mature lids because the formula isn't a really dry matte it's actually more creamy so it's going to look more hydrating on a mature eyelid but that blended out beautifully as expected let me pop that on the lower lash line as well there's also a dark matte brown we're going to go ahead and use that and i'm just going to place this in the outer corner of the eye. It's not giving as much depth as I thought, but it's applying really soft. It's very easy to use. Oh my gosh, I just made a mess. I don't have my normal mirror, so I'm like messing everything up right now. <laughs> we'll fix it, don't worry. I'm gonna blend out the edges, and then all you gotta do to fix it, I'm just taking my sponge that has my foundation and concealer on it. Much better. Okay, we have a couple different options for eyelid shades. I want to start off with this one right here because it didn't swatch very nice. So I want to see how it applies. So it applies nicer than it swatches, but it is a sheer base. So I can see my skin underneath and it almost looks a little splotchy. But if you apply it with a finger, I think it will add a nice sparkle to the eyelid. So this isn't my favorite shade, but I ain't mad about it. 
And then I do want to go into the darkest shade right here. This one swatched really nice. And I'm going to apply this just to the outer third of the eyelid. Even right over the matte shade. This one's beautiful. It would apply even better with a finger. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Because it's so creamy. This one is creamier than the actual cream eyeshadows, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Very pretty. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my finger to apply the gold shade, which also feels really beautiful. The center of the eyelid. What do you think? That looks really pretty. I'm also going to do the same thing along the entire lower lash line, just to add some sparkle down there. So I'm starting off with the lightest shade that has a sheer base. Going to go into the gold. And then we're going to finish off with the dark brown. The golden shade I'm noticing is a little messy. There's some flecks in there, but you can just wipe them away. But this is the look that I got trying to use all five of the shades in this palette. This obviously is very, very wearable. If you have a lot of Pat McGrath palettes, you're going to have these colors. But since this formulation is new, I'm excited about this one because I love this formula. Let's hop on over to the other eye now, and we're going to get a little bit more smoky with this one. Now, this one does not have any matte shadows, so we're going to have to play around and see what we can do. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics First Base Primer, which I really like. So, Sith Seduction. This one's going to be interesting. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and start off with the darkest shade that I could not get to adhere to my eyelid I'm using a BK Beauty brush, a 502, and I'm gonna see if we can kind of make this into a smoky eye. Ooh, that's not applying good. And this is the one that just didn't swatch good either. I feel like it needs a finger to push the product in because it's really PC. It doesn't adhere to the eyelid that easily. So if you want to use this shade, you kind of have to press it into the skin like this to get it to adhere. So applied like this, great. With a blending brush, terrible. <laughs> I'm going back into that first blending brush that I used and we're gonna work out the edges. So we're gonna create a little bit of a smoky eye. Going off with the darkest shade. And I'm gonna be careful about this, but I wanna see if I can smudge it out here without it looking messy. So I don't love that shade. This one doesn't scream luxury to me because it needs to be pressed and worked into the skin so much. It shouldn't require such an effort. Um, next up, we're going to go into the darkest green shade. I'm going to use just a MAC brush. Tap off the excess because these do have some fallout. This one is actually quite dark as well. I'm going to tilt my head back because it does have some fallout. Wow, this one is really, really dark. It has a very dark base to it. You may benefit from using a palette that has mattes in it beforehand or just using a bronzer in the crease to make this one work. And then I do want to go into this shade next out here. And I'm just going to do a gradient. Ooh, this shade is really beautiful. Ooh, I like that one. And then let's see if it's different from this one because these two look kind of close because they're both champagne -y. It's definitely brighter. That one's pretty. Honestly, I did manage to get a pretty look once I kind of refine everything. You can see all four of the shades on the eyelid. It's just a little messy, but I do need to play with this copper shade right here. And I'm just going to put this along the lower lash line like so. This one also is one of those formulas that feels and works out like a cream. Ooh, I like that copper pop. I'm going to go back into the dark green shade. I'm making a mess. This is a messy palette. And then I do want to work on blending this out to make it look a little bit more clean. Ooh, I have my opinions on things from this collection. Okay. I'm going to clean this up, put on a little bit of liner and lashes, and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on everything that I picked up so far. All right, guys, so here's the look. I just popped on a little bit of half lashes, some mascara, a smudged out eyeliner, and it pulled the looks together. But I've got to be honest, you guys, my thoughts about this collection, this is not Pat's best work. I didn't pick up a lot of items from the collection because they were just repackaged existing items or not even repackaged in some cases. Just had a Star Wars sticker thrown out there, which reads lazy to me, personally. Not well thought out. The packaging in general, even with the iPods, weren't the best. So packaging-wise, not great. The artwork, fantastic on the boxes and stuff, fantastic. But 
execution just wasn't done like a luxury house would do. I think overall, the new formulations of the iPods, I think they are nice. I don't really have much bad to say about them. They aren't as impactful or wham bam as I like my individual pots to be because these honestly just look like powder eyeshadows on my eyelid, which I think a lot of people would like if you have oilier eyelids or you just want to throw a pot in your purse to travel with just to one and done a look. I think there's definitely a crowd for this formula, but for me, it's not what I look for in pots, but they are nice and they look nice. They have some very pretty colors, so I like that formulation, but I'm not wowed by it. And then the eyeshadow quads I loved this formulation in the holiday palettes I feel like these aren't as good now for one I liked the color stories of the holiday collections better so their color stories I'm more likely to reach for but there's just a couple of duds in the palettes so I actually thought the golden one had better quality all around I think all the formulas in here were great the gold's a little messy but I can make it work this one's nice it's not as exciting to me because I own all of these colors already but you know you get a really nice formula very wearable I like the golden one and I didn't think I would I'm a little disappointed with Sith Seduction, particularly this shade right here is so so messy. I struggled to get it to adhere to the eyelid. This shade is also very messy. It's better than the dark shade, but it gets all over my face, so do your face makeup after. This also just isn't a color story I'm going to reach for a ton. I think it's very pretty, very Star Wars-y, and I'd reach for this shade individually, but all together, it's a bit deep dark for me. So color story is my issue with cis seduction, but that's personal. But there's a couple shades in here that I do find a little bit more difficult to work with. Um, that wasn't cis seduction, this was. And then the golden one, it's nice, but the color story just isn't as pretty as the ones from the holiday collection. So that's my thoughts. I mean, I'm still excited to continue playing with these. I definitely will be slapping those iPods on my eyelids while I'm continuing my vacation. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. It was definitely more laid back. I'm totally out of my element. I just wanted to sit down and play with these. Uh, so if you picked up any of these items, let me know your thoughts. Are you feeling the same way about me? But I'm definitely looking forward to the next collection Pat McGrath comes out with because she didn't quite hit it this time for me. So <laughs> anyways, hope you guys are enjoying your holiday break. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. I have the Makeup by Mario Foundation coming and the Natasha Denona and I doubt I'm going to be able to wait. I definitely want to review those for you as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.